Now let's look at a vulnerability that's JBIG2 in Japan. Oh, and it's a zero day vulnerability. So this was written up by Citizen Lab and it was found on a Saudi activist's phone and it is attributed to NSO Group, which makes exploitation tools that they sell to governments and law enforcement agencies. So JBIG2 is the Joint Bi-Level Image Experts Group and this is an image compression format. And it's possible to embed JBIG2 data streams into PDF files. And PDF files are automatically processed whenever they're delivered to a Mac or iPhone via iMessages. And that should, of course, make you go, eee, because PDFs are extremely complicated things that have a long and rich history of being used as exploitation vector. The fact that they're automatically processed by iMessages and the fact that you can just send someone an iMessage without their consent means that this kind of vulnerability is suitable for so-called zero-click exploits, meaning that the attacker sends acid to a victim, the victim doesn't even have to do anything like clicking on a link or anything like that, that they're just automatically, the, pro the code in the background is just automatically uh, consuming the acid and potentially being exploited. So at the time this vulnerability was found, Apple had recently introduced a new sandboxing measure called Blastdoor that was supposed to process ACID in a more restricted environment with the idea being that, you know, if an exploit took over, it would only have code execution in a much more limited, isolated, jailed, sandboxed environment. But it turned out that PDF files were not actually sandboxed at the time that this was found. Wah, wah. So words of power and words of destruction, we can already see from that brief description that we're gonna have some parsing of things like PDFs, we're gonna have some decompressing of things like JBIG2 streams. So the related work and the you know, citations that you can go read afterwards, they speculate that Apple was using the JBIG2 open source implementation based on three. And basically, if you look at Apple's open source release stuff at four, you can see that yes, they do have the code more or less the same. And even further, five did some decompilation that showed how closely the binary code logic matches the open source code. Consequently, I'm just going to show you the open source code and assume that that was the code that was found in the binary at exploitation time. So time to head to the web page and read the code and find the flaw.